One of the world's heaviest flying birds was hunted to extinction 200 years ago. Mike Dilger has been following the mission to reintroduce the Great Bustard to Salisbury Plain. Nothing symbolises new life better than a hatching chick. But this little guy's arrival means so much more. It's a new era for an ambitious conservation project I've been following for the past 10 years. Back in 2005, I first visited David Waters at his secret location on Salisbury Plain, where he was just starting on his mission to reintroduce the Great Bustard to Britain. Tell me what you're feeling. <laughs> Emotional. Just wishing them the best of luck, really, is that? <laughs> These majestic birds were once a common sight in the farmlands of Wiltshire, but were sadly hunted to extinction in the 1830s. But it looks like David is finally on track to change all that. Dave, 10 years, 10 long years since I first visited this project. How's it going? Very well. The birds are doing better than I am, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> the last couple of years, so many things have just come together and Ah, sounds a bit cheesy, but you know we've turned the corner and changed gear and taken off all at the same time. It's really happening well now. The change has come from finding a new source of eggs for the project. Rather than transporting live chicks all the way from Russia, David now has an agreement to bring eggs over from the world's largest population in Spain. What's the difference between bringing back chicks and bringing back eggs? Well, bringing the eggs back, we can control everything to do with the chicks rearing the food, the whole regime and so on, there's less handling of the birds. We are producing birds in much, much better condition than was ever possible to achieve in bringing birds back from Russia. Since bringing in Spanish eggs, the survival rate of the release birds has rocketed from 10% to around 50. And this year they're hoping for an even greater success with the quota of eggs they were permitted to collect. The 70 precious busted eggs are being incubated here at Bird World, where if I'm lucky, I might even get to see one hatching. Alice. Hi, Mike. Hi. Hi. It's some busted yep. chicks. Hatched this morning. Very cute. They are gorgeous, and I know they're freshly hatched because I can see the little egg yep. tooth right Definitely on their nose. Still got that. And of course, these hatch from eggs, which is that what are behind you? Yes, there's lots of eggs. Do you want to have a look? I'd love to. OK, here you go then. Here's a busted egg for you. First thing I'm noticing is how incredibly heavy they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. They're normally about 100 grams. This, of course, is the world's heaviest flying bird. They're going to lay good egg. And how do you know if that's going to hatch or not? Well, you'd be looking to see whether there's any little cracks in the shell. It's called externally pipping. Um, so it would be quite obvious if there was. As a zoo facility, Birdworld are offering their expertise to the project as part of their conservation responsibilities. Sadly, there's none hatching out today, but I still managed to get up close with a newborn. So, 73 grams, which is a pretty good weight. That's a healthy weight? Yep. How does he or she look? You can't sex him at the moment. No, you can't sex him, but he looks like a pretty good, healthy chick, got all the right things, two wings, two legs. <laughs> <laughs> So what's next? Uh, now we need to just put a little ring on him so they can identify him. Can I so, hold him? Yeah, if you want to hold him. <laughs> oh, what a privilege. And you want to hold the leg out? Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. So going on right leg, and it's just a little okay. coloured ring with a little number on there. So it's just for when they're first little, really. They'll eventually get bigger rings. And that will identify the bird right the way through the process? Yep. Is that it? That's all done. Ready back for the incubator? I have to say, what a beautiful little bird. Within 24 hours, the hatchlings are transferred to the rearing centre. And today, I get to play chick chauffeur. Well, I've got the chicks safely ensconced in my in-car incubator. All I've got to do now is plug this into the cigarette lighter to make sure they stay nice and warm. And then, next stop, sauce with plane. Great to see Mike. you again. How are you? Very well. I've got, got two chicks for you. you. Brilliant. That'll be number 
36 and 37. So what happens to these chicks now? We've got to suit up with our anti-human disguise. Are we going to make like a bustard? You're going to be Mother Bustard. <laughs> I presume this is going over my arm, not my yeah, head. No, we haven't got one that would fit your head, Mike, no. The idea of these is, combined with the suits we wear, if they don't quite mistake you for Mother Bustard, they at least don't think you're human. So when they're out and about in the countryside, the first time they see people, they'll not recognise them and they should behave as good wild birds and they'll fly off and keep their distance. This day just keeps getting better. That's it, we'll just pop them down here. Oh. As David teaches me to play mother to the older chicks. If you hold them straight out of the beak, so it's an extension of the beak, yes. rather than sideways, and you offer it to them straight on, yep. they find that the easiest to connect with when they peck at it. one of the very first meals to the busted chicks and to think hopefully those chicks will be flying around the plains later in the summer. I can't wait. It's been three and a half yeah. months since I first met those tiny chicks. They've grown up fast. Busters. And today I'm meeting David with the hope of seeing a true spectacle. There's a the flyer. Oh, there we go. It's so nice to see them in the air. Look at that wingspan. They're all around, it's amazing. Can we see any of the birds that I saw as chicks earlier this year? Yes, indeed, those three that are flying there all had a gold leg ring, and that, that's this year's identifier. I saw that as an egg a few months back, and now look at it, flying around the plains. Yeah. Terrific. The class of 2015 are surviving in the wild now, but David still supplements their food. They need to be in top condition to survive the winter, and the feeding brings together birds of all ages into a flock. So what food are they getting here, Dave? It's just a high-quality pelleted food. It's, it's full of all the right things, but what they're really after are these mealworms. Even though they're used to the suits, we don't want them feeding from your hand type thing. But if you, if you chuck a handful down in the pellets there... Lovely. Things are really looking up for the bustards. 28 of the 29 birds released this year have survived. And there's even been a chick born into the wild population. If he makes it through the winter, he'll be the first surviving great bustard born in Wiltshire for 200 years. What a reward for all David's hard work. And you're confident in the head stay? Absolutely, yeah. yeah and if I, if I didn't believe that, and if that wasn't the expectation, we really we wouldn't be here. Beautiful. 